For a film that is highly acclaimed and beloved as Casablanca, nobody thought that it would achieve such relevance or even suspected that there was anything special about it more than 75 years ago when it first went into production along with about 100 other projects selected by Warner Brothers Studios. Based on an unpublished play and released just after the United States had entered World War II, it tells the story of Rick Blaine, played by Humphrey Bogart, and an American who gets stuck in a titular North African city when the Nazi army comes marching in and searching for a fugitive freedom fighter named Victor Laszlo, played by Paul Unreed. Rick, however, couldn't care less about the whole thing as he much rather be focusing on running his club while the whole world outside crumbles. That is, until he runs into an old flame from his past, Ilsa Lund, played by Ingrid Bergman, who also happens to be Laszlo's wife. With a cast of characters played by Claude Rains, Sidney Greenstreet, and Peter Lore, this story plays out as Rick, haunted by his love for the woman who betrayed him, must choose what is best for not only for himself, but for everybody. Winning three Academy Awards for Best Picture, Best Director for Michael Curtis, and Best Screenplay, it received further nominations for Best Actor for Bogey, Best Supporting Actor for Reigns, Best Cinematography, Best Film Editing, and Best Music. Even more impressive is that it is hailed today as not only the best romantic film, but one of the greatest movies ever made named by the American Film Institute as the third best American film behind Citizen Kane and The Godfather. This is the reputation that I was somewhat familiar with before I watched this as a film student on my own time. It was quite the hype, something that could easily inflate anyone's expectations only to have it come crashing down when it could even meet them. It was something that I had to learn to not let myself be controlled by that impulse as it would not be fair to the movie. So I just took it as it is, as if it was just any movie I happened to catch. Thankfully with that mindset, I was awarded with an entertaining and an engaging story. While simple in its premise, it sports a list of fascinating characters, from the big names to the known names that all managed to hold their own and leave enough of an impression on me. And with the way that the story unfolded itself, it moved with a comfortable pace that it made each second drip with anticipation. It certainly is a very enjoyable film. But for his purported greatness, I can't really say that I felt that about it. Whenever I think of a movie that I consider to be the greatest, it has to say something that is entirely unique in its own way, or leave enough an experience to have me beholden to it. Some films, like Rashomon and Inside Out, I can tell that there is something grand about them just from the very first viewing, while others, like There Will Be Blood, will just take a few more extra viewings for me to see just that. I've probably watched Casablanca more times than most other films, maybe about 5 or 6 times in just a short few years. And even then, I can't really say that it is one of the greatest films that I've ever seen. But I can't deny that I do enjoy watching it. It is, by all accounts, a damn good movie. Flawless, I would even say. If there is one thing that I can say that this holds over every film that I've seen, it's the romance. Or, to be more accurate, the love triangle between Rick, Ilsa, and Laszlo. Now, Rick and Ilsa are often considered to be the most iconic couple in cinematic history, which I will say, sure. But what makes the romance intriguing for me is that the film never really takes any sides. And it certainly helps that the three characters are likable in their own way. Laszlo is the virtuous hero ready to give his life to fight against the Nazi regime, while Nick is the anti-hero, cynical and self-loathing as he would stick his neck out for nobody. And then there's Ilsa, a woman who is caught in the middle, torn between her loyalty to her husband and her undying, passionate love for Rick. While there has been some criticisms of Laszlo's character as being too perfect, even seen as a mythic figure among more savory characters, I've always liked Laszlo because he represents what is right, which is to fight against an oppressive government. Now you can argue that Rick is the more interesting character because of his all too human emotions, but he never comes off as heartless, or otherwise he would have been unlikable. He still cares, or at least he wants to care about people, but after being betrayed by his one true love, he finds it hard to form any meaningful relationships if it means getting hurt again, and that is where people can be able to relate to him more so than Laszlo. As for Elsa, she is dedicated to her husband and to his work, but she clearly is in love with Rick at least the Rick that she knew. She doesn't want to appear selfish, but she is so undecided on who she wants to be with that she let Rick do the thinking for her, which may not conjole to more hardcore feminists today. But I do feel that she does have her own sense of strength, especially in the end when... Is it fair to say spoiler alert for a movie as old as this? 
Ah, screw it. I'm sure there's bound to be somebody out there who hasn't seen it. Anyway, when Rick convinced Elsa to follow Laszlo onto the last plane out of the city, it's clear that the two may not see each other again and she has to walk away from the one man she truly loves, but she showed plenty of strength just to stand by Laszlo and leave him behind. She could have just broke away from Laszlo and run back to Rick, saying that she doesn't care what happens just as long as she can stay by his side. But she never does, and it does take a lot of strength not to let one's emotion to rule over our judgment. However, as great as the main three characters are, it is Claude Rains as the unscrupulous French police captain, Louis Renault, who steals the show for me. Every time he comes on screen, he instantly becomes a joy to watch because he is just so mischievous, yet he's honest about it, almost in a self-deprecating way. He's genteel, yet flippant, but not heartless. His sense of morality is more grayish as he is opportunistic when it benefits him, but he refuses to hold a grudge. Plus, he has some of the best moments. How can he close me up? On what ground? I'm shocked, shocked to find that gambling is going on in here. You're winning, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Reigns is just too much fun to watch with his great dialogue and performance, and the scenes he shares with Rick are the highlights of the film. On a technical level, it does look very good. Some of the things that caught my eye were the use of shadows and lighting in many of the scenes that helps give it a more haunting quality, like something from a film noir. Given that much of the story takes place in Rick's club, there were plenty of action going around the place with his patrons, the workers, and the main players to help give it plenty of life to it thanks to his editing and camera movement. Even with how the camera is placed with his framing, it does help give the story some depth. Like here where Laszlo looks at his wife from behind as Ilsa in the front ground talks to Rick and looks as though he suspects something between them. That's something one would not notice on their first viewing and when little things like that are caught, it adds something new to the same old story. So in the end, as a movie, it definitely works. It's hardly ever boring as it moves at a steady pace and it doesn't waste time, making this one of the most rewatchable movies I've come across. All the right elements are there and executed correctly that one really cannot find a way to make this any better than it already is. I seriously cannot think of one bad thing I can say about it. Sure there may be some logic issues like why don't the Nazis just arrest Laszlo immediately? But that can be easily explained away like overconfidence on the part of the Nazis with their quick rise in power. So yeah I can see why many call this one of the greatest movies ever made. But. I can't really say that for myself. Is it one of the more perfect films? Yeah, but as my definition for one of the greatest, it doesn't really fit. I can't really pinpoint why exactly that is. Maybe it just didn't hit me as hard in the emotional department, or the themes are not that hard to spot that it doesn't really require much thought. Whatever it is, I don't feel as enamored towards it as I would for films that are less perfect. Because of that, I'll give this a 4 out of 5. It may not be my first pick when it comes to awarding a film the top prize, but I'll easily concede to its win and be happy for it. It's an excellent film, there's no doubt about it. I may not feel a lot of power behind it, but it is a film that I can easily say, play it again. <laughs>